Hey everyone! So we're going to try our tutorial on how to use the airbrush. Um, this is the airbrush that I bought on Amazon. It's a master airbrush, very small, 25 psi, and that's all you really need for doing um, acrylic pouring. You don't need anything stronger than that. But that is the compressor itself. Plugs in, works great, and it comes with um, your air gun. Um, a lot of people use these. They put paint inside of here and spray paint for cookies or um, cakes, whatever they're decorating, or you can paint with it as well. But I just use it as an air gun. So in this box, you'll get um, the book on how to airbrush, and it shows you um, how to hook up the paint. Let me move the compressor. I have a mic on, so I hope you can hear me pretty good. But it shows you how to to spray. That's basic lessons. Um, that's if you're going to paint with it. But I don't think you'll need that if you're not painting with it. But it does tell you how to um, take care of it and um, um, how to hold it. Um, if you're just using air, you can just push down. Um, and this releases the paint from the chamber. So we don't need to use this either as well. So it's just pushing the button down. And it's not really loud. It's nice and quiet. So that's the book that comes with it. And then this one here is the instruction manual. And I believe this is for parts if you need to order new parts. Um, and just things if there's no power, you know, safety requirements for the user. But I did get this on Amazon. Um, this is the one I've got here. So if you want to just look up Master Airbrush on Amazon, uh, this one here was $49.96 and they still have some available. I should affiliate myself with them so that I get credit for all the links. <laughs> but I'm just going to um, work on a tile tonight just so that you guys can get the hang of it. Um, I'm going to show you a few things that I did though. When I first got it, I really wanted to do some paintings with it. This was the very first one that I did. Um, look at the glare. So I was just moving paint around, just playing with it, just to see, you know, feathering edges and stuff. So this was the first one. So then I got a little more into it, and I watched a guy on um, Facebook. I think his name is Eric. I have to get his name for you, but he laid paint out. They looked like bumblebees when he laid the paint out and then blew each color into each other, and this came out pretty cool. So I have that one. That's on a 12 by 12, I think, and then I have this one here, which I believe is an 11 by 14, but this they're very cool. These are varnished already. They're ready to go. Um, these will probably be in my Etsy shop as well. But then I just wire the backs, and I haven't signed these yet. But yeah, it's fun. So let's get started. And I'm probably going to be drinking while we're doing this. I'm really thirsty today for some reason. I've been busy, busy, busy doing laundry and paperwork for my brother in law. So. All right, so I'm just going to lay out some white paint. This is a t uh, ceramic tile that I cleaned with alcohol before we started. I need to get some gloves on because I'm going to have paint all over my hands. Too late, huh? <laughs> okay. Now, with white and black, when you filigree your edges like that, you really don't have to have silicone in them. I don't know what it is, but some colors just automatically sell up and feather out, but some colors don't. I'm just going to move this around a little bit. I don't have it on a rack or anything, so it's going to be stuck to my plastic when I'm done. <laughs> Put a little more on there. Might as well cover the whole thing. 
I'm a little out of breath because I was hurrying to get out here. My husband was late getting home. So I gave him his brother and said, he's all yours. <laughs> he's disabled, so we take turns taking care of him. I take care of him all day, so I need a break. He's not hard to take care of, though. It's just feeding him and give him his meds and help him use the commode. But he's had a stroke, and his whole right side is paralyzed, and they ended up amputating his right leg from a surgery that caused the stroke. So he doesn't get around at all. I'm just popping some air bubbles. All right. So I'm just going to lay a little bit of black out for you. Um, this has no silicone in it. And I'm just going to do just a line. Because we'll say let just say this is on your painting this is your edge okay so don't be afraid to order an airbrush it's actually fun okay, I can turn this a little better okay so what you're gonna do always don't go in like this you're gonna go in at an angle um, and try not to be afraid of it because if you're scared you're gonna really go in and pulverize that line but I'm gonna go in from this way and bring it this way but the more that you push it I'm at such a bad angle here So you'll be able to see this line here. All right, this is better for me. Just take that very edge and work it out. So maybe we should use some paint with some silicone in it. Let me grab some black. This is the metallic black. But you will get some cells going there. See? They're tiny, tiny, and I don't like them. <laughs> I like juicies. Okay. Let me go on a little bit farther. We're going to try a couple different colors, too. So. Let that set for a second. Because after you do a pour, you're going to let it set for a minute anyways before you get in there and start using the airbrush. But I just love the way these lines come out here. See the difference with the silicone? It might be because it's a metallic too. All you're doing is grabbing that edge. That's all you're doing. I'm turn the tile around. I'm using a tile because I know I can just wipe it off when we're done and I should have set it on something because it's making a mess. I'm watching my monitor to make sure I'm not losing the hair. I'm just grabbing that edge. I'm going to go right here. Now once you get it out like this and you get this hook on the end, you can get rid of that. You can either push the paint back and bring it back out and that'll get rid of your hook. hard and just like I tell everybody you should just practice a little bit first um, like I did those paintings that was my practice and they actually came out nice so that that's easy all right let me scrape that off 
And I don't care if I'm wasting paint while I'm teaching you, so. I always said I wasn't going to be a teacher, but I've had so many people ask about the airbrush and so many that have gotten them and they're afraid to use them. And I said, okay, I'll do a tutorial. So, and then all my newbies that have been subscribing for um, pouring, those tutorials will be starting hopefully tomorrow. I have the afternoon off and I can probably shoot a couple videos. Um, it'll just be tomorrow will be supplies and um, things to pour on. Just basic stuff. Okay. So, now that you have the black figured out, let's take a color. Um, let's try cerulean blue. I'm trying to pick colors that will show up good on the video. And I'm going to squirrel, yeah, squirrel that, mm -hmm. squirrel that a little bit so you can see. And you know what? Let's do this one first and I'm going to show you when you get two colors mixed together. So we're going to go ahead and push this out, grabbing the edge. It, when you first go in, don't go right in. Go in slowly and bring that edge out. It's easier to um, find it if you go against the white first. You can, this white will level itself back out, so. And sometimes your featherings, if your white is too thick, um, it may drown out your feathering, so you want to be careful with that too. Okay. okay, now let me do something else here. I don't want this to be a long video because it's just basics. So I'm going to take a little bit of purple. This is uh, dioxazine purple. And a little bit of black, metallic black. Does this look familiar, like from my last videos? <laughs> and a little bit of cerulean blue. Okay, so let's say this is your painting. Let's mix it up a little bit. And these are your edges. Of course, it's not a very big area for me to blow in, but we'll see. So I'm going to pick what I want to bring out. Because sometimes your edges may look great and you don't want to push them out. But you want to balance out the look of your painting. So I'm just going to take these edges and bring them out. See how I'm not going back there? Now I see, okay, I have a little bit of a gap there. So now I'm going to go in and grab a little bit of that purple and bring that out. And I'm forcing it now. Let it settle for a second. It's moving back. But it's not hard. You get the hang of it. But I just wanted to share with you the airbrush that I bought and what comes with it. You won't have to buy anything else. Everything comes with it. And I think they gave me an extra one of these. I couldn't find the case before I did the video, so. But I think it comes with an extra end um, that may allow more pressure to come out. That's just a pen. That controls the paint flow. But I was pricing these at, um, Gosh, you didn't see anything I just showed you. I'm sorry. I was pricing these like at Jerry's Artorama, and they were hundreds of dollars. And it was just the same basic airbrush. So if you want something that's inexpensive, um, if you don't want to use a straw, let's say you have a respiratory problem, 
I have trouble breathing because of my back, my back spasms. Um, so it's easier for me to just use this because if I was sitting here with a straw, I'd probably hyperventilate. <laughs> but you can do this with a straw, but you're not going to get these pretty little feathery ends. I've never seen them when I was blowing with a straw. It just is so pretty. So I'm going to flip that tile around and do that other side, and then I'm going to probably call this one done. Oops. Oh, my goodness. It's really stuck on there. Okay. And you will get paint all over your airbrush, but you know what a baby wipe or a crud cutter? I'll take it right off. I use baby wipes and crud cutters. Crud cutter comes by the gallon when I buy it. Very easy to do. Just practice and patience. I'm getting now where I just cruise right through. Because you can always push it back if you don't like it. You can always push it back and just touch the very tips. So there you have it, guys. Master Airbrush on Amazon, $49.96. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can always um, send me a message through um, to my email at uh, christinawelchart at yahoo.com or on my Facebook page, Christina Welch Art. Um, you can always send me a message on there and I try to respond as, as quickly as I can. It may take me a day before I notice that I have a message. <laughs> um, I'm not all Facebooky, but uh, yeah. Don't be afraid to try it. And then I'm telling you to go out and get one, but for the girls that have gotten them, um, don't be afraid to use it. I'm hoping that this video helped you a little bit. Get a tile, throw some white down, throw some colors down, and just play. Um, overlapping colors, I'll just show you real quick. Let's say we start with a dab of blue. And a line of purple and a dot of black that's that set for a second always let your paint rest for a minute before you blow it because it's gonna move and you just don't want to blow it out all over the place so now you can just take that and blow that black out through the blue oops see that like I just did <laughs> bring some purple up into it. I'm grabbing white too, so yeah. You can get some pretty cool effects when you mix your colors up. And you could do a whole canvas with just those dots like that. As long as you have something underneath to move that paint, and usually it'll be your white or your black. So yeah, give it a try. Like I said, get a hold of me if you don't have, uh, if you have too many questions and you're too scared still, just send me a message. And um, start with basic colors so that you can see what colors. A lot of times the colors will mix together and you'll get some pretty cool effects too. And watch so you don't make mud. <laughs> if you know your color wheel, you should be okay. Um, if you don't know your color wheel, print one out from online. And um, I do believe um, Buddy Measles has... Uh, video on how to read your color wheel I suggest you watch that um, I'm not sure if Rio Sara's covered that or not some people are doing color theory classes which is awesome I learned it in beauty school when I was going to school to be a cosmetologist so I kind of remember um, and I did a lot of color correction so but yeah just watch your oranges and your purples and um, your your greens and your purples <laughs> a lot of colors will make mud for you but this is really cool the way this is developed since we've been sitting here talking but yep I think that's all you need to know um, so if you're if you cannot get that airbrush and you want something that's comparable 
um, just shoot me a message and I will find one for you. And if you don't live in the United States, um, I don't know how much I can help you, but I can help you search for one. Um, as long as you tell me what kind of places you buy from, I could probably help you find one that isn't overpriced. So, all right, girls and guys, I've taken 20 minutes of your time, and I think that's plenty. <laughs> so, have a great night, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please click below and hit the bell so you know when I upload my next video. Click like and share, and leave a comment. I love my comments, and it makes me appreciate every single one of you. And I'm on my road to getting my thousand subscribers. I'm, I'm in my 700s, so um, please send your friends over. I'd like to hit my thousand and, and uh, feel really good about it. <laughs> so on the next one, we will be doing Back to Basics, and it'll be a year supply list for acrylic pouring. So stay tuned for that. And I'm going to throw in some videos of flip and drags or dirty pours or flip cups or whatever along the way too so that my people that already do this stuff um, won't get bored. So I will see you guys on the next one and have a great night. Thanks for watching.